Hey everybody, welcome to The Edge's Facebook page's number one show at this particular time. Three to five things we didn't have time to talk about today. I am your host, Fred Kennedy, and I would like to thank our wonderful sponsor, Train Like Heroes, 400 Monarch Avenue in Ajax. I was just there this morning, I was in the boot camp, and I we had a big AMRAP. This, thing, this is the thing with the boot camps there. I know that everybody gets all, oh, boot camp, what do you do? Like, you stand in a tie bow, tie bow. No, it's not like that. It's terrifying. So what we did today in the boot camp is we did it with like a whole bunch of exercise, and then we finished off the second round was what they call an AMRAP, and that means as many rounds as possible. And I won the AMRAP. I did the most rounds in the whole class. It was amazing. It's the only time that's ever happened. It'll probably never happen again, but it felt good to be a winner, to be a winner. Take that, mom and dad. Moving on. Uh, first things first, cocaine is coming. That's right, cocaine. It's the new cool drug that's sweeping the nation. What? The new cool... It's not really the new cool drug. It's quite old, actually. Cocaine has been around for a long time and has many medicinal properties. The first European encounter with cocaine featured during the colonial wars when the Spanish and the Portuguese were invading South America, and they were fighting the Inca. And for some reason, these Incan warriors were just unbelievably strong, fit, and they had incredible endurance. The reason for that, they would all chew coca leaves. That's right. That was the first ever instance of people using cocaine ever was these Incan warriors chewing coca leaves uh, to give them some sort of war. I forget the term, and I'm going to butcher it. Something That's culturally insensitive. But no, like the Incans were chewing the coca leaves because it made their warriors more fierce because they were kind of high on cocaine at the time. It is true. There's all kinds of like, what's his name? Not Cortez. Pizarro. Pizarro is the, I think it's Pizarro. Frig. I'm getting everybody all confused there. Uh, but, like, he actually wrote about how he saw a guy get shot, his arm shot off with a musket, and he just kept on going. He just kept on going because he was on cocaine. It's a hell of a drug. Um, so, apparently, there is a massive influx of cocaine that is about to hit the shores in Florida. Uh, the U.S. Coast Guard issued a warning earlier today saying that they are for sure certain that a massive shipment is on its way in. At first, you know what I thought? Oh, this is just some sort of promo event for the third season of Narcos coming to Netflix in just a few weeks. By the way, Narcos is an absolutely incredible show that breaks down the entire history of all the cartels in South, like in Colombia, not all of South America, but how like the whole cocaine explosion actually started in Chile and moved up into Colombia, and that's how it all came. A very fascinating show, very cool uh, thing that they're doing, and I'm really excited to see uh, the third season, which focuses on the Cali cartel. Honestly, it's amazing when you read about um, when you read about Pablo Escobar and the things that he did. There is a turn. There's this. There, there is a huge turn in that series for him as a character because you really get the sense that he wanted to make enough money to make things better for the poor people of Colombia, and once he got into government, he was shamed. And once he was shamed by the government that he was trying to improve, that's when he fell off the deep end Deep end and fell a victim to hubris. Because there's this thing. There was all these, like, super ultra-left-wing radical groups in Colombia at the time that were, like, kidnapping people from the government, holding them for hostage, and then ransoming them to get the money to improve their little guerrilla wars. And so Pablo Escobar gets in there and says you know what, we'll stop all the kidnappings because he has a drug cartel with like a paramilitary organizational strength to it and he just starts killing all the people that are kidnapping people and he becomes like a folk hero. It's, it's absolutely incredible to watch and I encourage you to do it. But about cocaine coming to North America, part of me kind of thinks, what's the problem with all the cocaine being there? Like I'm, I'm not saying, yes, there's problems with drug dealers and drug addicts and all that stuff. I get it. I get it. But why are we trying to fight this horrific war on drugs that we will never win? Why don't we try and find a way uh, to stem addiction problems like the safe injection sites? Like, why don't we work on things like that to try and give counseling and medical access to people that are suffering from drug addiction? Because I really feel that drug addiction is a psychological problem. People are psychologically prone to be addicted to things. And if we give them the medical help that they need, we can keep that from happening. If we make it actually legal and regulate it and tax it, we can find a way of turning a negative into a positive. You know, think about how many people you know are alcoholics. We all, we all know alcoholics, but we're not going to ban alcohol. It has horrible properties to it, but we still drink it. 
Cocaine was in medicine for years, and I really believe that the main reason it is illegal is because in the United States, the, the massive pharmaceutical companies down there didn't have a way of immediately making money off of it, and so they decided, wow, we're going to make it illegal, blah, 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 blah. I know it's a little bit more complicated than just a little three sentences there, but there's a lot of money involved in terms of keeping it illegal. I'm not, am I, do I sound like a crazy cocaine person on a paranoid rant? Because I'm not. I'm on good old fashioned legal cocaine, coffee. Mmm. Legal speed, the American way. That's a great song from Wagwagon called Coffee Time, by the way. Moving on. All right. This angers me so much. I was reading about this woman in the United States, in Washington State, actually, who was at a chicken fillet, a chick of chick full chick fillet, chicken fillet, chick fillet, and there was a fried rodent in her bun of her burger. And now she's suing. This it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. All I want is to have something like that happen to me. Not because I want a fried dead animal inside my sandwich that is made with another dead animal. It's because I want money. I want to go on a stand and be like, I can't, I can't, I can't eat bread anymore. I can't eat cars. It's carbs. It's running for my whole life. I want something traumatic to happen to me that's not really traumatic, but looks traumatic so that I can sue a major corporation and get lots of money, possibly to buy some of the cocaine that's washing up on shores in Florida right now. But, you know, like like a, a severed head in a salad. Like, oh, I, I could have a Caesar salad. Oh, a Caesar salad's pretty heavy. Like, oh, no, that's not Caesar dressing. That's a severed head. Something like that. Maybe, like, some beer with, oh, there's a foot in my beer. There's a foot in my beer. Madison, well, you look disgusted. Are you legitimately afraid of... <laughs> A finger found in a burger happening. and a Ew. slug. It does keep happening, but it's not <laughs> happening to me. And that's the problem, Madison. Maybe, like, I'll be, like, getting soup and I'll find the one ring forged by Sauron himself. And it'll tempt me to go to Mordor and give it to him. And, and I'll put it on and I'll fall under the ring spell. Do you think there's a lawsuit involved there? Like, if I didn't want the one ring and somehow I got it, I could sue somebody. And what kind of soup would it be? That looks like cream of mushroom. What is that? What kind of soup is that? Is that like potato cheddar soup? Yeah, potato cheddar soup is what I could see finding the one ring in. Maybe some sort of broth, like a leek broth. Put that on. Moving on. Wow, what a turn of events there. Okay, here we are. A photograph of a, a drawing of a breast, a woman holding it. Listen, two weeks ago, I was all excited because I heard that breasts were suddenly fashionable. And breasts are cool. Breasts are hip and with it. Everybody loves breasts again. But now I'm learning that people don't like breasts. Sure, Rihanna's is walking around with all, sporting some cleave. Everyone's pumped about that. But now, no. Apparently, the millennials aren't fans of the breasts. This was a thing. Uh, according to stats from Pornhub, Pornhub released a whole list of stats in terms of searches. Now, I question everything I read on the internet, but Pornhub, Pornhub is probably the most honest source of information on the internet. I'll say that. What do they have to hide? What? So, they did a survey about what all the demographics were searching for. And young men between the ages of 18 and 35 have a 42% less likely chance of searching for breasts when they're searching for pornography versus people 35 years of age and higher. Now, is this an age thing or is the new generation just not breast obsessed? They don't like breasts. They want little breasts. Maybe that's what they want. They don't want Rihanna and her large breasts. They want, I forget what's her name? Cara Delevingne. Cara Delevingne. I was about to call her Cara Unibrow, but I didn't because that would be mean. That would be body shaming, okay? And I don't get into that. People like what they like. Some people like no breasts and thick eyebrows. Some people like pencil-in eyebrows and large breasts. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not being creepy about it, okay? But here's the thing that I'm curious about. Like, is there... 
Okay, by the way, I thought you were going to have a bigger bulge. When I said like I a... I didn't di- know. Okay, all right. <laughs> we were allowed. I was... Okay. I was going to try and have uh, allude this into a question about breast size. Like, are large breasts circumcised penises and are small breasts non-circumcised penises? Because why are we so obsessed with what men want, huh? Hashtag smash the patriarchy. Hashtag check your privilege. What about circumcised penises? Are women going onto Pornhub and specifically searching for penises with hats and without hats? I was hoping that maybe these underwear would be tight enough that we would know, but we don't. Therein lies the mystery. Maybe women like the mystery. Maybe it's like a fun little surprise, you know? Oh, I don't know what's in there. Oh, there we go. Here we go with this one. This time. Hooray. That's a thing. Is like, I think, you know why I think pe- guys make such a big deal about penis size? Because it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Because you, you have a decent idea about a girl's breast size when they're wearing clothes. You can usually tell, well, she's got large breasts because I can see them. She's got small breasts. So I can't see them. But when have you seen, unless the guy is packing like a howitzer in his pants, you're not going to know. Like, think about it. Like, can you tell the size of a guy's junk by the pants he's wearing? Sometimes. Sweatpants. Look at this. There's, you can't see anything. It's flat. There's nothing there. I'm, I'm like a Ken doll. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. But then again, the difference also with penises and breasts, is he a shower or a goer, you know? You know? Move on. Okay, all right. Let's talk, to so- let's talk about something a little less controversial than penises and breasts. Let's talk about... The Charlottesville riots, the, not riots, march, the, all, the, all the stuff that happened in Charlottesville. Of course, me even saying the wrong word once makes everybody mad. So, that's a statue of Robert E. Lee. This is great. I'll tell you something, and it, this could be seeming like a bit of a controversial sentence at first. I think that that march of those idiots on Friday with their little tiki torches, everything happening up until the violence was awesome. And here's why. Here's why. Because all those bigoted idiots and racists and Nazis have become so emboldened by having a big wig racist buffoon like Donald Trump in power that they now feel that they can go out and wave the flag and look at me. I'm also racist and closed minded. They've been emboldened. They've been embiggened, as Jebediah Springfield would say. Got to throw that in there. And now... Their faces are getting circulated and they're starting to realize that no, there's not a whole lot of racists out there. You're in the very small minority and you played your hand too hard. Robert E. Lee's family, the descendants of Robert E. Lee, the statue that they're trying to protect, said they are totally fine with it being torn down. They have no problem with it being taken down because it represents a dark time in the history of the United States. All kinds of Confederate monuments were getting taken down over the past few days. Do I think they should be, like, melted down or whatever? No, and here's why I don't think they should be. I think they should all be put in museums so that they're given context. When you start forgetting about bad things happening, you're more prone to repeat them. We need to make sure that we are reminded of those awful things, but we're not celebrating them. There's a very, very big difference between the two of them. But I really think that all these racist idiots are finally getting exposed. Like, there was, um, okay... I'm really, like, screwing this all up because I did, I only read half of my notes and I put my arguments all out of order here. But after the whole thing, Trump went on and started talking about how there's violence on both sides. There's great people on both sides. And immediately, all, this, all of a sudden, all these people that you thought were staunch, tr- staunch Trump supporters have, like, come out and said he's an idiot. The CEO of Walmart has said it was pathetic. The CEO of Campbell's said it was pathetic. People are leaving his business advisory councils. All of his bigwig money advisors and people that were in his camp have realized, oh my God, he really is a complete bigoted piece of garbage. And they're dropping from him. It is becoming a huge deal. All those racists are getting exposed. All their faces are being put out of there. And everybody's sort of galvanizing and realize, oh my God, this is how bad it is. It's like a rallying cry. It's bringing people together. It's terrible all the things that went down on Saturday. It absolutely is. But sometimes it takes a terrible thing to unite people and really get their heads out of their asses. We're really starting to see how much bigotry and racism is out there. And we're really starting to see how many of those people are becoming emboldened and feel like it's okay to spout their idiocy. I, I 
wish I'd read my notes in the right order there because I had a very poignant way of putting it all together. But I want to finish it. Well, the Campbell's lady, she she put a big post about how she was leaving. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, no, no. Okay, hold on. Sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy's family came forward and say they wanted nothing to do with him. There was also a documentary from Vice where they put it online and they had this guy talking about how he's a proud skinhead and a proud racist and all that stuff. And now he's posted a video online about how terrified he is because he realizes what he's done and he realizes all the consequences that are adding up against him. All these people are being exposed. And it's really sending out a message that no, 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 we are not okay with that. It's putting the fear in them. It's putting the fear in them. And it makes me happy. When you've got people that are deliberately going around trying to ruin people's lives because of the way they were born, the color of their skin, and then they're suddenly being afraid, that's a good thing. Nazis should be afraid. We fought wars against them. One war. And we won it. We won it. Moving on. I wish my notes were in the right order. It was so poignant. But I hate racism and it drives me crazy. And we just got to get rid of it. We got to get rid of it right now. Let's get it all out there. Get rid of it. I, that's the good thing. They're all, I said it already. Closing the door on it. I just get upset and I get emotional. Let me have a sip of coffee here. Mmm. That is a burger made out of crickets. Isn't it amazing? Uh, that's right. Burgers are hitting grocery stores in Switzerland made entirely out of cricket patties. That is the new thing. I am telling you right now that we are all going to be eating bugs as a major part of our diet within 50 years. Here's why. There's a lot of them. There are a lot of bugs and they're very good for you, and they're very nutritious. And when I say we, you should realize that large parts of the world that aren't North America and Western Europe are already eating bugs all the time. Why? Because they're good for you. It's very nutritious. And the thing is, is it's a lot more sustainable. You look at the amount of nutrition you're going to get out of crickets, pound for pound, versus what you're getting out of a cow, it's not even comparable. And also, there's a great documentary called Cow Cowspiracy. Cows are the worst environmental disaster that we have going for us, period. Cows. Cows produce way more CO2 than all the cars on the road. Cows take up so much land. They're responsible for so much water pollution because it's not like we're talking about cows that are just out hanging around the field. We're talking about industrial level farming and it is an absolute nightmare. Am I crapping on anybody? No because they also taste really good. But invariably, it's just gonna get more and more expensive and people aren't gonna be able to afford to eat steak anymore because it's just not sustainable. Versus crickets are. And if you can serve me a cricket burger that has the same taste and texture of a hamburger, I will gladly eat three of them at a time. What? You take cricket burgers over a veggie burger? Absolutely, I don't believe in putting innocent vegetables to death. For you and your greed, okay? You're a terrible person killing sweet little baby vegetables. Eat a cricket. Doesn't have feeling, okay? They're great fiddle players, but they don't have feeling. Um, yes, so eating crickets, that's going to be the future. It's just better. It's better for the environment. Uh, it's more nutritious. And when's the last time you've heard of somebody having high cholesterol because they eat too many crickets, huh? You haven't heard about that, have you? This is another thing, jellyfish. I always say that if we can find a way to like eat an animal, we can solve the problem with it. Jellyfish... There's a massive jellyfish explosion in the oceans right now because the temperatures are getting higher and we're destroying all the apex predators because we want to fish and get sushi because it's healthy. So people are like killing all the, all the ocean life. There's like half the amount of ocean life that there was like 50 years ago. Like half. Half of the ocean life. Think about that. We've eaten half of the ocean. It's a lot of sushi people are eating. Now there's jellyfish everywhere to the point that they're like – clogging the intakes of nuclear power plants. And there was a nuclear power plant in uh, the Mediterranean that almost had a meltdown because jellyfish had clogged the intake valves that they were getting water in. So we can find out a way of eating jellyfish, have like a jellyfish side with those locust burgers. Buddy, solved a lot of problems right there just by eating them, literally. Speaking of eating, how'd you like a wonderful $100 gift card from our friends over at McDonald's? 416-870-EDGE. McDonald's, if McDonald's makes a cricket burger, I'm all over it. Do it up. 